types of strokes. So there's two types of strokes. There's a large vessel occlusion and non types of strokes. So there's two types of strokes. There's a large vessel occlusion and non uh, large vessel occlusion or, or, or small vessel occlusion and uh, large vessel occlusion. And so then how, how can you tell the difference? Both of them are very similar. The both have motor weakness, so you can be weak, you can have sensory loss, or you can have dysarthria, where you have slurred speech. Now, dysarthria is not aphasia. Aphasia is when you can't actually say shirt or pen or what, but you're drunk, right? So both small vessel has motor, sensory, and dysarthria. Dysarthria is motor, it's not aphasia. Large vessel, so, what, so how can you tell what's the, what the difference is? You can have those small vessel things, the motor, the sensory, and um, the dysarthria, but then the difference is large vessel is basically van. So van is the mnemonic for cortical symptoms. So V stands for vision, right? And under vision we say gaze, Okay, their their gaze either to the right or left, or they can't follow you past. They go to the right, but they can't go to the left. You know, so gaze, um, vision is the ability to see. So they lose per, per, peripheral vision, and so you, you you tell them, look at my nose. How many fingers? One. How many? They can't see anything on that side. Nothing. Right. Two. Five can't see anything on that side, right? You you go like this and they can't see anything. So that's vision. Gaze or vision loss on one side, the, the peripheral vision. A is is uh, aphasia. Aphasia is the ability to understand and produce speech. So being able to name watch and pen, okay? You, they, they sh if you show them a watch and a pen, like right here, what's this? Watch, and then you show them a, a, a pen. Okay, um, and then the ability to understand. And so you just ask them to do two things. Close eyes, close eyes, make fist, make fist, that's it. And that's all aphasia is, the ability to produce words, naming objects, and the ability to follow commands. And then the last thing is neglect. And aphasia usually goes with right-sided, Weakness and neglect usually goes with left-sided weakness. And for ne neglect, they usually neglect the left side of, of their body. And so there's really three to four ways to test neglect. What we do at uh, Stroke Van is we test the most sensitive, which is sensory. Have them close their eyes, then you touch right, they'll tell you right. Touch left, they'll tell you left. You touch both at the same time, they will only tell you right. Even though you're touching both sides, they're only telling you, yeah, right, you're, you're just touching my, my, my right side. And so they're, they're they're ignoring uh, or they're neglecting the fact that you're touching both sides at the same time. Another way is you can show them their left arm and, the, and they'll say, and you ask them whose arm is this? And they'll say yours, even though it's theirs. Or you ask them, are, are, are you weak? They're like, no, I'm not weak. I'm not weak, and their left arm is obviously weak or left leg. And so they're neglecting all the deficits on the left. Again, for stroke van, we just test the sensory because that's the most sensitive, but I'm, I'm being complete for um, other people watching it. And in summary, all of these, the van symptoms, so vision with the gaze and vision loss, um, aphasia and neglect are National Institute of Health Stroke Scale items number two, three, nine, and 11. That's all it is. So basically for van, you need some sort of weakness, some unilateral arm weakness, whether the arm comes like this or weakness, plus any cortical symptom. If you have no weakness, you're automatically van negative. If you have weakness, but your vision is fine, two, one, you, you don't have a gaze preference, you can name wash, pen, even though you have flirt speech, follow commands, close eyes, make fifth, and then neg 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 neglect you to touch both sides at the same time. They're like, yeah, you're touching both sides then they're still van negative because they don't have any cortical symptoms. And um, here's a brain which basically shows you that all uh, van symptoms can be drawn out on the brain. The frontal gaze is up there, ability to talk is also frontal, motor and arm, and then the sensory is in the back of the brain. And that's how every um, animal is actually made. That's how every brain is. All the motor stuff and thinking is up front, all the sensory is back here. So the ability to name objects, that's a motor. Watch pen is up here. Frontal gaze is up here. Motor is up here. Then all the sensory. So ability to understand. Close eyes make fist is back here. 
neglect, which is integration of information, the sensory, whatever integration, that's also sensory back here, and vision also sensory is back here. And that's how every um, uh, mammal with a brain is organized. And that's how your spinal cord is organized as well. But this is a, a, a powerful thing, because then, because I've showed you this on a map, and using the van app, you can actually localize it. It'll say the superior M2, the inferior M2, the PCA, because now now VAN is the only complete cortical symptom testing tool out there. You can use it to localize, it'll tell you PCA, Basler, superior M2, inferior M2. Not, not only is it the easiest in a sense, positive or negative, but it also can localize for you. And so hopefully you, you see this brain and it, and it helps you uh, to localize. So you can have a massive stroke where your arm and leg don't move, but again, you can have a stroke in your spinal cord, which is this big, right? It's tiny, and yet you can't move your arms or legs. Your NHO seal is 20 or more, right? Um, and um, so the key is, the reason why small vessel strokes can also have weakness and large vessel uh, uh, strokes uh, can have weakness plus cortical symptoms is because that uh, cortical spinal tract or brain to spine tract, that big area where there's face, arm, and leg, as you see up here on, it all comes together to a tiny bundle. And that bundle goes through the brain, through the midbrain, uh, uh, through the brain stem to the spinal cord. So if you get tiny little strokes on any of that on the way down, you, you, you can have this massive stroke. And here's an example. Someone with a lacunar stroke here, face two, and the natural institute of stroke tail. I have this R3, my arm is four, my leg is four, four, 10, and probably at this end I felt kill of 10 or 12, but I have no cortical symptoms. Two, one, I don't have gaze problem. Uh, name, watch, pen for a the file commands, close eyes, make fifth, right? And I'm and I'm not neglecting the fact that I'm weak. And and if you touch both sides, yes, you're, you're touching both sides, right? And so this is basically showing you weakness alone does not mean it. Now, how do people get away with only testing weakness and severity scales? The reason why is. Uh, most people with very severe weakness uh, basically uh, do have a large vessel occlusion, but it's not vice versa. Anywhere from 30 to 50% of large vessel occlusions can actually have minor weakness. And so, uh, you know, uh, one is more sensitive and one is, 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 is more specific. Um, and so that's why the scales such as the LA motor scale can do, work pretty well for massive strokes, right? But all those LVOs with minor weakness, they tend to miss those any th anywhere from 30 to 50%. And so uh, people always ask, why do we ask, or why do we test motor arm like this? Close your eyes and we're looking for subtle weakness like this, the hand curling or whatever. And we're looking for unilateral. The reason why we don't test, we don't say both, because if someone has sepsis, right? They're infected, they have low glucose, uh, they, they didn't sleep enough, drug overdose, they're drunk, right? Both arms will be weak. But if one is weaker than the other, that, that usually indicates that, that there's a stroke when there's unilater unilateral weakness. One, even if both are weak, but one is weaker, that's usually an, an, an indication. Because uh, you can have a stroke and be a, a diabetic with, with glucose of 500 or something, or low glucose and still have a stroke. But it's that asymmetry that's super important. So why do we test arm more than the face and leg? Because with the face, right, um, it's less uh, specific, okay? And so you, 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 you're gonna miss a lot, but also Bell's palsy can, can be involved. Uh, brainstem, small vessel strokes can involve the face as well, okay? Again, they, they, they can involve the arm, but the arm is more uh, specific as well and, and sensitive. And now the leg as well, we, we all know that for large vessel occlusion anterior circulation, the leg is the least to be, the last to be affected in general, right? And so that's why the arm, the arm is the perfect balance between sensitivity and specificity. All right, so that's why we, we, we use ARM. And then here's a um, study out of Switzerland which looked at the best predictors using the NIH stroke scale about what is um, the best predictors. And you can see motor ARM was better than face or leg with an odds ratio of 7.6. But if you see what the... Uh, uh, <laughs> 
uh, top four things are, okay? Gaze, which is part of our vision, aphasia, ne neglect, and motor weakness. So they're basically looking at over 1,000 patients. The best predictors are the VAN exam.